Bodili Manor, over 500 years old. It stands in the Wendron district of Cornwall, land riddled with underground tunnels. This was tin mining country. Here, ivy covered engine houses still rise above the landscape, a striking reminder of the way things used to be. Jonathan Hodgetts bought Bodili Manor six years ago. For the first few months, he thought it was just like any other house. When we moved in, the, we didn't sense anything particular going on. We started to tear out fireplaces and that's when all sorts of peculiar things started to happen. Jonathan believed that something may have been disturbed. My brother brought this house, which we were all excited about, because um, it was lovely to be able to come down here and have a few days away, a nice break. Elizabeth came to visit with her 14-year-old son, Chris, and his friend, David. Well, in the daytime, I felt, felt really good, relaxed, you know. Until you get to night time, I started to feel really different. They heard the door rattling in the bedroom and said they felt somebody or something was in the room with them. I felt unsafe and I just didn't feel happy. They didn't like the idea of sleeping in the house. They said they didn't like the feel of the house. It seemed to scare them. So they asked if they could sleep in the car. I said I didn't see any reason why not, if that's where they were going to feel happier. When we got to the car, we felt relaxed, calm. We were just messing about, being stupid. Dave felt scared to get out of the car. And it really sounds like there's something, something was really out there. with a start I thought what on earth is going on and they were just cowering on the floor in the car the pet they wouldn't look up to start with they looked petrified their eyes were really wide open um, the color had drained from them they were frightened to death I was quite shocked when this first blew up but then thinking about it afterwards it was beginning to build up a bit of a picture you get some peculiar smells, um, smell of sort of burning or fire. Often at night time, lying in bed and you think you hear voices, you get up and come downstairs to turn the radio off and it is off already. Jonathan started to believe that perhaps the house was haunted. He contacted Trevor Kenwood from the British Ghost Club Society. He informed me that there were some mysterious happenings or appeared to be mysterious happenings going on at the Dilly and was it possible that we could put a team together and come and do a proper investigation. I started to give a little guided tour of the house and then we started to do a darkness session in the dining room. It was uh, Trevor and myself and one or two others. The whole atmosphere in the room went very cold and, and uh, clammy. I can't 
candelabra began to shake and move and rattle. The next thing we heard was that the, the big, heavy casters on the bottom of the table were also rattling. We suddenly noticed that the, the table was rising up off the floor. And the way that people were sat around the room, it couldn't have been somebody at the table. It must have been an absolutely massive force to, to have lifted it on its own. A bit later on in the evening, it was decided that the team would move into the lounge for another vigil with the lights out in the dark. We're all just waiting and looking with anticipation to see if anything was going to happen. I remember hearing Trevor say, oh, look at the fireplace, something's happening. We all became aware that, that it was appearing as if it was a mine shaft, a very deep mine shaft. Slowly a shape materialised, a dark form. We were convinced that it was a miner. There is a big history of mining activity in this area, so some kind of mining link isn't particularly surprising. The tunnels of the Bassett and Gills mine were burrowed like a labyrinth into the land around Badilly Manor. In 1858, it was the scene of a major disaster. A group of miners were working near the surface, beneath the slurry pond. An explosion ruptured the roof of the shaft with horrific consequences. Trapped underground in the darkness, there was no time to escape. They drowned in a sea of choking slurry. Seven miners died that day. Their bodies have never been recovered. Is it possible that perhaps their troubled spirits haunt Bodili Manor today? I've reflected on what's happened quite a lot. We still sense things here and just waiting for the next experience. It was six years ago. I still feel uncomfortable here at Bodili Manor. <laughs>